Welcome back to Deck Check, where you better check yourself before you deck yourself. I'm Ganesh. And I'm Samurai Dancer. Let's hop right into our top 10 for the Top Deck Invitational. We're going to start out with some underdogs and work our way up to the more favored grinders. First up, we have our old friend Spooky, also known as Jacob, who appeared as a guest for our wonderful Off Meta podcast. Spooky boosts a cool 27% win rate for 2023 and 2024. Uh, and mainly plays Pantlaza. Yeah, Spooky's got some pretty awesome uh, stats when you look on his profile. Uh, mm -hmm. He's got two wins, four top fours, and two top 16s. So all in all, his conversion rate uh, for 2024 is 40%. That's insane. Yeah, like, that is really, really good, uh, especially considering like he's not playing uh, any sort of meta deck. You know, Pantlaza is... Uh, is I don't even know if he's on the first page of EDH top 16. And, you know, that just goes to show you, like, you know, if you have a good solid brew, you don't have to play the number one, number two, number three decks. You can find a niche and make it work. Yeah, I would say Spooky with Pant Laza is very far off in the distance when you come with the meta. He's definitely probably the most off meta player we'll cover today. Dude, just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep playing the Dino Dozer, bro. Yeah. Next up, we have Jacob Nguyen, who pilots Narset. Uh, which one was it again? <laughs> Enlightened Master. The OG, the original, the Khan from Khans of Tarkir. The original three set. This thing was a monster. And you know what? Uh, I think yeah. it got better. Yeah, it's it still is a monster. Um, I played against this player twice, no, three times actually, um, and it was kind of nuts. So the first couple times I played it against him was at OKC, and he won one of the games. Uh, I was against him, and I think I won the other one. And then the other time I played was at. Cowtown, and there's actually a video about that experience if you want to see it. Uh, it's called uh, it's the draw video. I'll link it below. But yeah, no, he's very good. This deck has gotten nothing but better since its inception, and he almost won our top four round uh, at GalaxyCon OKC. Yeah, it was crazy, uh, and almost walked away with <laughs> all those duels. <laughs> And the reason why is because he had an Urza Saga. Uh, and we thought we had a turn off for Narset. Like, the table thought we didn't have to hold up that much. Um, but he went and he fetched Lava Spur Boots with Urza Saga. And he gave Narset haste. And we we're all like, ah, oh, crap. He almost oh, yeah. won. The only reason he didn't win that game was because uh, Narset whiffed. Um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, looking at his just stat-wise, he's got... Two wins, eight top fours. Eight top fours? What the heck? He's got yeah. three top 16. His conversion his conversion rate is 30.9%. He's played in 40 tournaments, of which he has made top 16 13 times. That's crazy. He's got a 29% win rate. And, you know, uh, people often ask, what's the difference? Like, what's the barrier between good players and bad players? Uh, and average players. So bad players will have a sub 15% win rate in tournaments. Uh, that's just how they are. Average player will have around 25%. It's 21. 21%, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw CDs who talk about it. Like the average player has about a 21% win rate. Yeah. And great players go from like the above a quarter of the win to above that. And the reason why... Um, you normally don't see them above 50% is just because you got three other opponents that are going to be at equal. And then you also have draws. Mm -hmm. So that's automatically going to lower your win rate. So like when you see someone at 29%, you think, Oh, like they're just 8% better than the average like player. And it's like, no, no, no. That 8% is a monstrous number. Jacob it's eight percent. It's eight of 25%, right? Which is like 50% or, no, it's not 50%, but it's like a, a larger percentage. Like it's like 25% uh, or whatever it is. Yeah, eight times four, 
I'm, just, I'm not doing math well, am I? <laughs> yeah, you're not, but it's okay. But basically, yeah. so the average player would have a 21% rate between draws and just the fact that you can't win every game because there's three other players. And the fact yeah. that he's at a 29% win rate, I often say good players and great players will have 30% win rates or as close to it as possible because they will just, that extra 10% more than they should have is the edge. It's like a casino. You know, they win on like 0.25% win rate. Would you say 35% you know? is a pretty good number? 35% is a monster. Okay, there's there's no reason I asked that. There's there's no one I know that has that <laughs> Right, right. Well, <laughs> the next player. Yeah, yeah, and the next player. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, next up we have Timujin. Um, yes, we know Timujin. We love Timujin. Um, not to get political here, but uh, everyone loves him. He's the greatest, right? He was the greatest of all time. Yeah. Uh, he's also known as Just Dice. That's an inside joke from uh, Chaos. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, he got... Uh, I'm not going to go into it. It's just hilarious. Uh, if you see Timujin in your tournament, just always call him Just Dice. He'll get the joke. He'll show you the mat. Uh, yes. As far as monsters go... Uh, Temujin is not. I'll be honest. He's not a monster. He is just wow. consistent. Yeah. That's the difference. Like, monsters can have good days and they can have bad days. Temujin will be there every day. I mean, his numbers kind of reflect that, for sure. Uh, a solid 36%, 55% conversion rate. These are, yeah, this is pretty close to my numbers as well. Um, but I'd like you to look at how many tournaments he's played in this year. This year, 2024? Only 22. 22. I mean, that's about my number two. I played in 19. So I guess he's both similar-ish in terms of mm -hmm. performance overall. Exactly. But the difference is, I think Temujin has actually gotten better as this year went on, as have you. But I think Temujin just ran out of tournaments to play in. Um, ah. Yeah. I know where he's situated. He doesn't actually have a lot of locals to go to. Mm-hmm. Uh, that should change in this next year as top deck has become more accessible and more LGSs are picking it up. Uh, with his 35% win rate, he is definitely an above average player. He is what I'd like to call a great player. Uh, but what really makes him great is he moved away from control decks like Tibet and Talion. Like, that was his main problem. He would just get so many draws that it would come down to, oh, is Temujin going to top 16? I don't know. Was he able to get a win in before a draw? Yeah, so it looks like he used to play Tibet, but now he's switching to Blue Farm. Yeah, he switched over to a deck that can actually present wins out of time. Yeah. Uh, he he was on Italian for like a long time as well. And it's just like he likes a controlling play style. But the problem is when he was playing with Tibet and Italian is he would get into a dominant position, but there was no way for him to just pull the trigger and end the game. Right. Uh, so he switched over to Blue Farm. He's still playing it pretty controlly, which is great. That's a great way to play Blue Farm. People call it mid-range hell for Temujin. This is mid-range hot tub. Uh, he's just going to relax and enjoy and just cook. Yeah. Okay, cool. Speaking of cooking, our next player cooks a lot of uh, of art, really. Gold Sabertooth. My God, Gold Saber. Look at this guy. Another above-average player with a 36% win rate. Yes. But whereas... Temujin had 22 games. Tim only had 15. Right. Right. So Conversion he... rate is 37%. Yeah, that's good. Um, and on top of that, he was playing Tivit, which is a hard commander to win with in general. And not like Tivit's bad, but like... Oh, are you talking about Gold Saber? Gold Saber's yeah. not playing Tivit. Well, I mean, that's what his most played was for the past few years. I know he's not playing Tivit anymore. Yeah, he has moved away. He's on yeah, the yeah, yeah. I'm saying, thing. like, these numbers that we're looking at, they are largely Tivit, but the last, like, 25% of it is going to be Nadu, right? Oh, yeah. He, he is so deep into Nadu. He has custom art for it. He has made the Nadu Summer mat, the Nadu Summer shirt. My man has just totally coped into Nadu. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Do not be surprised if he shows up with it at the, uh, at the Invitational. He loves the bird. He loves the bird. But in all honesty, I think uh, Gold Saber is going to be a player to watch, but I don't think he's going to win. But I do think he'll make top 16 easy. Wow. 
I, be- I believe in you, Tim. Don't don't listen to him. <laughs> you, the only reason I don't do think it. he's going to make top 16 is got, uh, not going to win is because I believe Nadu will not win this tournament. Uh, That's fair. That's yeah. very fair. Has nothing yeah. to do with the player, has to do with the deck. Yeah. No, I, I, I see where you're coming from. Anyway, yeah. So uh, check out Gold Sabertooth. He has really, really cool art. And he was also another off-meta podcast guest. And I should mention uh, Temujin was kind of like i mean he wasn't technic he was off meta before i was off meta he was our the channel's first um deck tech interview uh and then we started off meta podcast and it's kind of gone on from there but anyway the next guest is also <laughs> an off meta podcast guest <laughs> um yeah you know Kirk, have you like looked at how the win rates have gone up as we've gone up our list of players yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, so we are going um, from the lower positions on top deck, the leaderboard, uh, all the way up to the higher and higher ones. And yeah, Kirkland, why don't you tell us a little bit about Aranus and Street Urchin Samurai? What's what's going on here? The deck, hate the deck, hate the deck. Big fan though. <laughs> this is uh, someone who plays a deck that it just absolutely raffle stomps. I have recently. Okay, so I love, I love, I love Kizit. He is the GOAT. I love playing against him. I hate playing against other people on this deck. Uh, Because, <laughs> yeah, I'll be yeah, honest, yeah. this is one of those decks where it's like, it's like Tyam, you know, like people can pick it up and sort of win with it, but most people will just be spoilers in the game. They just won't know how to play their, their pieces and how to, like, actually control the board. So they'll just lose the game for the other for two other players. Uh, Kirkland will win the game. Kirkland is yeah. a monster on this deck. Uh, yeah. He has 11 uh, tournaments, but he has a 45% conversion rate, a 36.84% win rate. He has four top 16s, of which two of those are top fours, and one of those is a win. That's insane. Yeah. That is a crazy number. Uh, This is a player that I often – so we often talk about this, Brewer's Advantage. I think Kirkland can actually win this um, because – it's a deck people don't know how to deal with. It's a deck with a lot of interaction, and it's a spoiler to most decks in the meta. The only thing, the okay, I can see this deck struggling once it hits top sixteen, uh, and has nothing to do with the pilot skill, and all to do with the um, tournament meta that it's going into. Uh, one of the things that can really ruin this deck is any deck that gets under it. Um, and so, for those that don't know, uh, definitely check out our episode off meta podcast with Kizit on this one because it is really really interesting it's one of the most interesting ones we've ever had um but it's basically a board control deck um but one of the problems this deck is going to run into if he's playing it at the invitational is there's going to be a lot of rogsai and rogsai doesn't care if you ping his rog rack because chances are he's already you know sacrificed it to calling the week anyway and there's a Nas on this deck and there's not a lot this deck can do when there's Nas on the stack, there's some things like they have Besage you, you know, they have like a couple of weird counter spells and weird interaction things. But if they're able to go off before you can get a combo piece down, good luck. <laughs> before he gets a hate piece down, Rograk can win. He yeah. needs to get down a Null Rod or an Oof on the Rograk. Once he gets that down, it does become pretty hard for them to win. Yeah. Uh, Rograk notably does need artifact mana. As do a lot of the decks on this list. But the problem is Rograk's the only deck they can go, oh, turn one. Oh, turn two. I don't, I win. Did did you even yeah. get a turn two? You didn't? Okay, so. I mean, the worst thing about Rogsai isn't even the fact that it can pressure quick wins. The thing I, I dislike most is that it like it wheels you turn one. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, well, now it's just, it's just like, you know, we've all drawn a fresh seven. And in theory, Rogsai is the one that's going to be able to take advantage of this fresh seven the most, but a lot of times they're not. And like, they just pass to the next player and then they, you know, they sometimes they get the nuts. Sometimes it's just a non game. And I don't know. It's not a great play pattern sometimes, but um, it's yeah, a cool deck. Turn one wheels, such a flip of the coin, but like, yeah. remember, people mulligan for hands they want to keep. So when you disrupt that, odds yeah. are normally they get a bad hand. Right, uh, and you've, like, mulliganed for a hand. You, you know, you're going to throw out some fast mana before you wheel. Like, you're going to throw out your opal and stuff. 
So it does it is does benefit you more, which is obviously why they play it. Um, but anyway, two wheels are strong, but that's enough about the raw rack yeah. decks. We're not a, no one on the, our list even plays raw rack. There's a reason for that because they're all just the same uh, player. Uh, wow. No need to keep an eye on them. They're the same player. They all follow the cabal play <laughs> round, the the playbook. Uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about rock side too much because you know anyone that knows anything about this upcoming event knows it's going to be just full of rock side. Yeah. Top 10 had like six rock rack players. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking at some of the other ones because it's, it's hard to talk about the differences between individual rock side players and stuff. But anyway, next up we have Jacoby, my boy, your boy. Is, yeah. Jacoby, uh, Jacoby, uh, really shined this year. Um, he's been around for quite a while in the format. Uh, but what I like to say is he's he's what I like to call the Kentucky crew. Uh, this can, this consists of Jamaican dude, LJ Mesa, and a couple of other well-known players. Uh, the reason why he's doing so well is because he has these players that he can play with on a consistent basis. He has a great group of friends that will help him. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only thing that I think will stop him from doing well in this tournament is if he doesn't listen to him on his deck. Uh, the last time he didn't do so well, he kind of ignored people that gave him advice on his deck. He was like, oh, no, nah, I, I know. I know what I should play. And then he didn't listen, and he absolutely scrubbed out. And then he went to the boil after he was like, he was playing a lot before the boil, and he listened to a lot of people. He made the changes to his deck, and he absolutely crushed it. He got 10th at the boil. A platinum. Yeah, really good at the boil. He did very well. Uh and he's done very well. Uh, I see he's been trying out Blue Farm, but he's been getting terrible results on it. So in my Aww. opinion, I hope he switches back to what he normally likes to play, which is like, I would love to say that he likes to play like certain commanders, but he doesn't. He likes to play Cat. He likes to blink the kitten. So I just hope he goes back to that play style of blinking Displacer Kitten. Dex, uh, he's had pretty good success with uh, Krom and Tevish, but he's also done pretty well with uh, Drasios Timna doing it. So I hope he just switches over to that. Yeah. So he's a TNT fan. Um, yeah, definitely looks like he's done well overall. Like, not much more to say. I'm glad we've got someone repping a not quite off meta deck, but uh, well, it's not meta anymore. So maybe it is off meta. That's something cool. It's something interesting. We, we don't see too much. Deck. An OG meta. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Max P. So this is someone that will, you may know him formerly from Colors Are a Crutch. Uh, he is now starting his own thing. And once we get more info on that, we'll definitely give him a shout out. I'm waiting to find out a little bit more information before we do that. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at his stats. So very solid, a beautiful 33.33% win rate. Doesn't get uh, more. All years, you got to go to 2024. Oh. Uh, even better in 2024. <laughs> yeah. It's 34. <laughs> exactly. Man. He's, improved. Yeah, yeah. he's gotten much better. Uh, he's played in nine tournaments, but he has a, so he's got a 34% win rate, but he's got a 58% conversion rate, which means in every tournament he's played in, he's got over a 50% chance of making it to the top 16, which That's shows nutty. that he's a very good, consistent player. Yeah. 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 For sure. Uh, I got to play against him in Cowtown, uh, not in tournament, but with some friendly games. And uh, both games we played, he ended up winning. And he was playing, at the time, he was playing Timna Jessica. So you can ignore this, you know, Talion. I mean, this Talion does contribute a lot to these numbers, probably. Um, was he the Florian guy, too? Yes, he was the Florian guy. He's the Florian uh, guy. Okay. I, I have a great history with Max P. Uh, so we used to, I used to play a lot of Rakdos. Uh, I was on a uh, Rog Tevish mm-hmm. and, uh, me, Max P, uh, this guy named Gold Ducky. And, uh, I forget who the other, it was a bad player, uh, decided wow. to do a, I'm not going to lie. We decided to do a Rakdos showdown. Uh-huh. Uh, and, uh, Max P, uh, he lost both games, but he was funny as a hack on that. And we talked uh, because we uh, during that game, we got to talk a lot. And he basically told me that he's like, listen, I believe that the 
this format is going to revolve around card advantage in this next season. He yeah. said, we're, we're going to see this become just about who can draw more cards, who can consistently gain that advantage, and who can turn that advantage into a win. And I was like, okay, an interesting idea. And then we go into uh, 2024, and we get into mid-range hell, which is all about who can draw more cards off Rhystic and Mystic. Yeah. Yeah, Max for sure. Max is a visionary of this format, which is why he's on six silences right now in Jessica Timna. Yeah, so he's on Timna Jessica, and that's the deck he was winning with when I was at Cowtown. And um, he also entered Cowtown. I don't remember what he placed, but it was pretty high. It was... Uh, it was ninth. I think it was top six. Yeah, it was top six. It was ninth. Yeah. Yeah, so he made top 10, which is really, really, really good. Um, he also got 11th at Punt City. Very good. Very good. Yeah. He's, Very he's solid player. Um, I don't think there's too much else we can say. Very high conversion rate. Um, yeah. I don't know. What else can you say? He's, let's, uh, uh, we can just say he's great. He's great. Let's move on. Uh, next up. Is Our top three players. Uh, I'll be honest. Freedom Waffle. That is the number one player uh, uh, for last year. Number one player last year, uh, according to Mons. Uh, yes. From CDH TV. Check out his channel. But Freedom Waffle also is the one that helped me build my deck. Uh, he literally gave me the list for Malcolm Kettis. He said, "Oh, you know what? If you like Malcolm, you should play Malcolm Kettis. A friend of mine built this." And I kind of helped him fix it. And this is the curry list. You should play this. Played it. Got a top four. Played it. Got a top 16. Played it. Got a tournament win. Have been playing it since. Uh, he is the most uh, by-the-numbers player you will find in this format. He has a, um, a table for keeping track of your games and keeping track of cards and deck lists in there where he can break down your percentage win and what wins more for you. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, but as you can see, look at his win rate this year. 46%. That is oh, that's all wild. yours. You got you to hit 2024, my friend. 51. <laughs> Jesus, dude. We talk about what makes a player great. Um, if he wins half the time he's in a game out of four players... I think he's a great player. Uh, he's played in 17 tournaments this year. Uh, his conversion rate is 68%, so close to 70% of the time. So 7 out of 10 times in a tournament, he'll win. Uh, he'll be in the top. Uh, of that, all of those top 16s, uh, he has 8 wins. So uh, of, those, of those, he has 8 wins, 3 top 4s, 2. So he has 13 top 16s out of his 17 tournament wins. Out of his 17 tournaments. So half the time that he's in a tournament, he wins it. Not that he tops it. He wins it half the time. Not much I can say to that. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even, like, look at his numbers. Because I, I know he's great, but, like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wins half this tournaments that he's in. How do you fight that? That's... Oh my gosh. Just flip a coin at the beginning of the mm. tournament, Evan, and just see if you won top deck because that's that should give you an answer uh yeah that's crazy he is a blue farm player um was on thrasio stargo he did he played it but he he wins on he, he's a blue farm player you know him as a blue farm yeah. player ganesh yeah, he yeah, played yeah. him get enough times like we've both, all played him enough it's it's we're freedom both blue waffle. farm brothers <laughs> yep what was it weren't you in a top four with him yeah and that that top four uh I don't think I made very good uh, decisions, and the uh, the Derevi somehow won. That was hilarious. It was very uh, funny. It was like watching like three blue farm players kind of be like, "You guys ignored that Derevi player so hard." We, it board. wasn't. It wasn't that we ignored him. Is that we couldn't interact with what was going on? That but was the problem. Like, like, we couldn't do like, anything. And and he is such a good player. Evan is such a good player. He's a heavy politicker though. I'll be honest, he does like to talk. Uh, here's an easy way to deal with that. Just say I need a game action, folks. Yeah. Oh, man. But damn, Evan, like, I thought you were a monster last year with your uh, your 42% win rate and your three wins out of your 26 tournaments. But, like, this year, how do you improve on being, like, one of the number one players last year into being a 
fifty percent chance of winning a a tournament. Jeez. Better than better than everybody else. Oh my gosh, Evan. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Nuts. Uh anyway. I mean I don't know what else there's to say, man. Like this is crazy. An almost seventy percent conversion rate into top sixteen. Uh oh my yeah. Anyway, next person. Comedian. Ian Flannery. Um you should yeah. know who this is. He's... Yeah, that's right. Our number two is comedian. Yes. Not number he, one. Yeah, he was part of what got me into CDH. So thanks, Ian, <laughs> for that. Now, it should be noted, he's number one on the uh, leaderboard. Yeah, he is number one on the leaderboard, but he's not our number one just yet. Because there's another player we think you should... Uh, Look out for. Anyway. What do you think he's bringing to the championship? What do I think I can be? Oh, it's... So he was on Kenrith, um, but I don't think he's going to be on Kenrith anymore. I think what would fit his play style is I think he's going to bring Nadu. You think he's going to bring Nadu? I think he's <sighs> either going to bring Nadu or Blue Farm. And I'm... I uh, No, he doesn't like Blue Farm. He's going to bring Nadu or he's going to bring, like, something that's not Blue Farm. Like, maybe Rogsai. See, uh... I paid uh, I paid him a thousand dollars. He's bringing Loris. I don't think he would even do that for a thousand dollars. See, this is what makes Ian such a conundrum because, like, we talk about like a lot of these players, but most of these players play one deck and they play it very well. Ian is like the freaking chameleon. He just adapts to what he thinks is the best deck in the meta. Uh, but I'll have you know that he has just been jamming Kinnan and Nadu. So I think you're right. It's either going to be Kennen or it's going to be Nadu. Yeah, I was thinking about his play style, and Kennen and Nadu both play well into that. So um, I'd be surprised if he wasn't on one of those two. Um, yeah, I don't think he's going to want to be on Blue Farm or something like that, or, or Rock. So I, don't, I really don't think it's possible he'll be on Sisse, but I really don't think he's going to be on Sisse either. Um, but anyway, we'll see. We'll see in a couple days, you know. Yeah, uh, um, let's just look at his numbers real quick. His numbers, um, very good. He's played in a whole lot of tournaments here, uh, 50 tournaments, uh, in total, which is like a lot. Um, and he has a f almost 43% win rate, which is also very cracked. Uh, and he has a 63% conversion rate, which is nuts. Like, that's really, really good. If you have a 60-ish percent chance of, um, you know, if you know you have a 60-ish percent chance of making top 16, it just makes the math of like, hey, should I enter this tournament so much easier? Because you're like, hey, you know, take top 16 prize pool, divide it out by 16, multiply it by 0.6. Does this, does, this, does this make money for me? It really is. Uh, he also was the one of the first people to qualify for the Invitational uh, because he won the boil. Nice. So the boil was one of the first was the first platinum event of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, he won it, automatically locking him into the Invitational. He could have just stopped playing, Beautiful. and he would have been here. But he didn't. <laughs> no, I wouldn't either. Cool. Um, yeah. So last up, Wait, now please. a lot of people watching on YouTube may not know this player, um, and it's not because he's not good. Uh, it's because he doesn't have a large social media presence. Like, I don't think he has a... Does he have a YouTube channel? I don't think so. Oh, this is Jarman, man. Jarman. The Antigua. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that's what I call him. Uh, Jarman the Antigua is a tournament grinder. Uh, so Jarman is actually second on the leaderboard, but anybody that has played in a tournament with Jarman knows this guy is a goddamn world-eating snake. He is a monster of old. So we've gone over a lot of their stats today of our top 10 list. Let's look at his wins. He has 15 wins. That's nuts. Uh, a lot of our players don't even have 16 games. Uh, I mean, they don't even have like 16 top 16s. He has 15 wins. Uh, his He has 12 top fours and 11 top 16s. So overall, he's double digits on all his uh, top 16s. Uh, so he's got, what, 23, 38 top 16s. That's insane. Yeah. That's more than some people have tournaments. Um, he has played in 53 tournaments. So of those 53, he has a conversion rate of 
percent. Oh, uh, I'm looking at all years. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at all year, years too. Yeah, yeah, for this year he has 16. Uh, t- he has seven wins. Uh, he has a total of 20 top 16s. It's the same. It's the same between 2023 and uh, his conversion rate has not changed. Interestingly, yeah. Enough. So he is just consistent. He has played in this year alone 27 tournaments. He has a 45% win rate. He has a 75% conversion rate. This is the hidden beast. This is the Leviathan in the ocean that is tournament CDH. Yeah. Uh, Jorman, I'll tell you some fun facts about Jorman. Uh, Jorman is not someone you make deals with at a tournament. No. Uh, yeah, Jorman will lie, uh, just so you know. Because Jorman doesn't give... He doesn't care. <laughs> He's there for the win. Fair. Yeah, okay. Like... Like, uh, we often joke about Cowboy uh, Bob, a friend of mine, uh, the value of um, Grand Abolisher. Uh, Jorman doesn't care. He will literally tell you, like, he'll be like, yeah, you know, I won't, I won't try to win next turn. And then he'll just throw you a Thassa's Oracle console. Hey, I mean, you got to like, whatever works, right, I guess. He is. It's just what he is, because he's not there for, like, to be your friend. He is not there to uh, make you feel good. He's not there to coach you. He is there to take home the prize. He is the uh, tournament assassin. And as you can see, it's working for him. Yeah. Good for him. Oh, my God. Uh, he's on he's on Blue Farm 99% of the time. I've seen him play Kennen. I've seen him play Rockside. But I haven't seen him play him at tournaments. Because to Jorman, uh, he's all about consistency. And he believes firmly. That blue farm is the most consistent deck that you can take into any tournament and not have to worry about it. Yeah, I would agree with that statement, which is also why I play blue farm. Yeah. Uh, Jorman is a great player. He doesn't miss sequence very often. Uh, he's very good at predicting what players have in their hand and seeing his moment and going for it. This is a player that, like, in all honesty, if you were to meet him at a tournament, you wouldn't think he'd be, like, the most dominant player in the format. Until you were sco- you were scooping up your cards, being salty. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that about wraps us up for the top ten players. You should uh, keep an eye out. We went from some uh, some lesser known, maybe some underdogs with some some very cool decks, all the way up to some absolute behemoths of the format. Now, and before yeah. we go, there's one more top ten player that an eleventh player. I'd like to ask some questions of. Uh, which who Ganesh how are you feeling towards this tournament a little apprehensive I'm not gonna lie like it's gonna be the most stacked tournament of literal all time um it does not get more competitive than this you know I do take some pride as to you know I made the um made the leaderboard you know I'm I'm in the invitational I'm definitely going to be picking up one of Gold Sabretooth's stickers, the uh, the Top Deck Envy Thoracle little sticker, because, uh, you know, I'll be there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to go there. I'm trying not to worry about it too much. Just play my best game. Uh, not lie, because I have a, a small reputation to uphold, right? And uh, just do my best, man. I think well, if I just make Top 16, I'll be happy. Because Top 16 out of the more or less the Top 64 players of the entire world. Like I know I imagine like there's some Europeans and, and Asian people that might not be able to come just because they'd have to like fly here and stuff. But you know, more or less the top 64 players of the world are going to be at this event and I'm going to do good out with them. Well, I'm looking forward to you doing very well, my friend. I'm so Thanks, rooting man. for you. Uh, <laughs> you're rooming with spooky, right? I am rooming with spooky and a couple other gents. All right. So remember, you gotta you gotta sweep the leg from Spooky if you meet him in tournament. But you might want your own card key. Might want my own car key. Oh yeah. Well, I'll just make a copy of his and I'll I'll run out real quick and drive away. Cool. Right. Well, I think yeah, I think that about yeah. wraps us up for this this little this little video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy this sort of content, remember like and subscribe, and we will see you guys later.